Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just here to remind you that our Washington, D.C. fundraiser is almost complete. There's just one or two days left. You! What? I know your game, you harpy! How dare you ask us to bankroll your vacation! Actually, I'm not going. Good! They don't need your kind! Romping around, smelling of leather- Wait, what? Not going? What villainry is this? Well, after we'd made all our plans and had everything set in stone, I ended up getting invited onto a nationwide Canadian morning show to discuss feminism on International Women's Day. CTV, the top-ranked Canadian TV broadcaster, literally dumped this panel discussion about feminism in our laps at the last minute. Like, not even really one week notice. The email came in days after I booked my flight to Washington, D.C., and initially I had asked if I could take part in their DC studio uh, via remote, and they gave me the go-ahead, but now they tell me that it's booked solid, and the only other real option is for me to go to Toronto uh, the day after the Red Pill screens and appear in studio at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. So in the interest of ensuring we get an actual men's issues advocate on the panel, it's been decided to send me there using what money we can scrape out of the contingency budget. This is fraud! Using your contingency budget for a, uh, 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 contingency? Charlatans! Uh, situations like this are why you have a contingency budget, because something always comes up. Bobbycock! You, you, you should have you, you, you should have somehow accounted for this new thing. Uh, how, how could you not know CTV was going to do this? It happened two days after we started the fundraiser. If we hadn't left the fundraiser this late, we probably wouldn't even have the flexibility to change some of our plans to accommodate. Stop trying to hypnotize me with your sensible answers. You take money to do things you shouldn't be doing. That's what matters here. And now you've managed to double down on your diabolical doings of things, you're taking money to do the thing you shouldn't be doing, and now you're doing two of them? Two unspeakable depravities for the price of one? I won't stand for it. Uh, this is an outrage. It's more than an outrage. It's an enrage. It's, it's an out and enrage. Anyway. Everybody cringed when CBC's The National invited two feminists and a conservative commentator on to discuss men's rights groups. We were all appalled by the fact that the conservative, while he was supporting our right to speak, had pretty much zero clue as to what we stand for and had no idea how to counter accusations against us of things like transphobia and misogyny from those feminists. He did really well for someone who doesn't know crap about us, but the fact remains, he didn't know crap about us. I don't want to see that happen again, and since CTV mysteriously no longer has space in its Washington DC studio, that means I'm going to Toronto. Allison will still be attending the Red Pill premiere in Washington DC and cover any goings on during International Women's Day. We've scored some interviews with Paul Elam, Tom Golden, Harry Crouch, and some other people involved in the Coalition for the Proposal for a White House Council on Boys and Men. Now, if you don't know who these men are, they're pillars of the men's rights community. Giants. Paul's responsible for breaking the media blockade on men's issues with his controversial fuck-their-shit-up style. Harry's been a workhorse for decades. His organization, the National Coalition for Men, faces down legislation that discriminates against men, and he's actually uh, sponsored and written uh, bills that have been voted on in, in legislatures across the U.S. Tom, who's been a guest on Honey Badger Radio multiple times, is a noted author and serves on the Maryland Commission for Men's Health. We only have the afternoon prior to the showing with these luminaries, so it's critical that we maximize our time. Not to mention getting the story of the coalition for the proposed White House Council out to everybody. So Allison is still going to be going to conduct those interviews and make sure to bring you the scoop on the coalition, what they stand for, and what they've been through. Why they think the red pill is critical and timely in its release, and all of these were primary reasons for us going in the first place. And the story of the Coalition and their brush with fate is indeed a story for the ages, involving a Boy Scout and a Boy Scout official standing with the proposal in their hands outside the door of the Oval Office when someone in the Obama administration back in 2009 kindly scratched it off the agenda and said, well, it just isn't the right time for this. And then the proposal was never to be viewed by anyone 
at the White House ever again. Allison and Jonathan will also still be there in D.C. covering the event and getting footage of any exciting protests on the sidewalk outside the theater, but they will not be filming me sitting around a table with the guys, these old buddies of mine, drinking Sauve Blanc, shooting the shit about men's issues, the proposed White House counsel, or how it's the least they could fucking do to keep my glass topped up. It is with sincere regret, therefore, that I am announcing that we have decided to split the team and I will not be in D.C. with Allison and Jonathan to be plied with free alcohol by three men I adore and would love to hang out with again. I will not be there to watch the entire U.S. economy grind to a halt because for one day women abstained from buying consumer products for political reasons. I will not be able to one-up Steven Crowder by getting amusing footage of protesting women who have absolutely no idea what they're angry about. No, instead I will be dragging my ass out of a hotel room bed before 4 a.m. my time so I can be in a studio sitting at a table at 7.15 Eastern across from a bunch of Toronto feminists, you know, the most rabid feminists in the known universe, to make a case on national TV for pro-male anti-feminism. Who knows? Maybe I'll be able to provoke a reaction like this. I, I don't, I'm, I'm so confused because I don't see why we should we, we I, I'm not or this crime because oh of two God. states We're, of mind. You're a rape two, apologist. Two you're states. saying rape is OK. No, no, no. Or maybe this. Are you going to give me a thank you for that or you're just going to keep on blobbity blonde? Otherwise, oh, stop I'm, voting and go make me I, a ham sandwich. You just never know what's going to happen when these people are actually forced to confront ideas they've never been exposed to before. Anyway. If you want to send me to a studio that exists at Canada's Feminist Ground Zero and Allison and Jonathan to be feted and entertained by the brightest shining lights of the men's community, well, fucking go ahead. I don't fucking care. Because you know what? You know what? Fuck you, Allison. I hope you and Paul enjoy your sushi now that I'm not going to be there to veto your disgusting dietary preferences. Raw fish. Ugh! Tom and Harry, you have fun without me. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'll be doing actual work. You guys just fucking have your fun, have your laughs while I sit in an empty hotel room drinking wine I had to pay for myself. Because you know why? Because the greater mother fucking good, that's why. So I hope you're fucking satisfied. That's why Aunt Petunia had a mollusk stuck up her bum. Wait, what? What, 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 what were you saying? That I'm not overjoyed that Allison talked me into this. What? We're doing that? I, I, I thought it was written out in post. Could you just hand me the script for a moment? I lost my place. Here. All right, good. Where are we? Oh, yes. Fuck you, Allison. I hope you and Paul enjoy your sushi. You caught up yet? Stop smirking! How do you know if I'm smirking or not? You're edited in after the fact. I have my ways. <clears throat> now, don't give me any of your head shrink hypnotism, harlot. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to drain these poor saps of their hard-earned milk money by paying the victim of your own whorish accomplice. What? I'm not taken in by this fake anger routine. I know the two of you are in some unholy allegiance, working for the dark forces. Scarlet women of the seven-necked beasts of the apocalypse is what. Further, I have a concern with Alison's budgeting. She's the pinhead of you two, correct? Pinhead? You mean... She makes the arrangements most of the time. Yeah, generally. Yeah, she does. Do you see this? Do you see this line item? Why do you need to stay in these expensive places? Well, I guess I'll take a stab at explaining her logic, because she needs to be in walking distance of the venue so she can conduct the interviews. She probably wants to do everything she can to make sure those interviews happen, and uh, not being able to get a cab or, you know, lugging heavy equipment for miles and miles, not really... Uh, not really conducive to getting things done in a short amount of time. Those are probably her reasons, but, you know, why don't you ask her? Pa! You should all sleep at airports or park benches. I'm sure I could find a dozen cheaper options. In fact, here, have a sack. How are we supposed to conduct interviews in a sack? Well, have you tried it? Okay. Okay. We have one or two days left on the fundraiser. Links are in the low bar and somewhere up here. We are going to try to cover both events without asking for any more funds, which may mean this comes out of my tax refund. Thank you again, Allison. Although she assures me that probably won't be necessary. Yeah. 
You better be fucking right about that, Allison. This is perfectly adequate for your needs.